Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes. In this video, I'll be focusing on the technique controls that are found on the right-hand side of the switches section of the Dorico Expression Map dialog. We've looked at the volume dynamic settings in previous videos, but there are many other goodies to explore here. So let's get straight to it. The control at the top of this column which appears only when you have a legato technique switch selected, will help you when using VST instrument legato presets, which are typically monophonic. This means that they can sound only one note at a time, but perform a natural transition between overlapping notes, such as those under a slur. There's a problem though, which is perhaps most noticeable with string instruments that can easily play more than one string at a time, known as double stopping. It would be a shame to have to bypass the legato preset altogether because your project contains at least one instance of double stopped music. So when you check the monophonic legato control, Dorico will automatically remove the legato playback technique whenever it encounters multiple notes being played at the same time. Even cleverer, however, is that Dorico will continue to lengthen notes within this technique switch as set in playback options. The next control lets you set the MIDI transposition for the assigned instrument in half steps or semitones. Typically, this would be useful if the sound library preset you're using for an instrument has been shifted by an octave. For example, double basses sound an octave lower than their notated pitch. Dorico accounts for this in its double bass instrument definition, and so do many sound libraries, but not necessarily all of them. So you can set the transposition of the instrument down an octave to compensate. Just remember that in this case, you will need to add the transpose amount to every switch in the expression map. Or it might need to work the other way around, perhaps with something like a harmonics technique in a violin preset. In that case, you might need to transpose up, but only for the relevant switches. The delay control will make instrument presets play a little bit ahead of time, or a little bit behind. This is most useful for presets with a slow attack, and you would set a negative value here to compensate for how long it takes for the sound to properly get going, as it were. If you find slow moving string presets, gentle choir sounds and so on are sounding a little sluggish, then maybe try adding a negative delay setting to see if that helps. The length percentage control will modify the played duration of all notes for the technique switch. It won't make any change to notated durations, it affects only playback. For the most part, the sorts of things you might be trying to achieve here, such as lengthening notes for a legato switch or shortening staccato notes, are generally better controlled via playback options. If you're working with a library with specific requirements for a particular technique, then this control gives you the flexibility to get to where you need to be. It's perhaps worth noting as well that while quarter notes and shorter are modified by the exact amount specified here, longer notes have this value applied only to the last quarter of their duration. It stops longer notes from getting ridiculously long. Now, as I mentioned in my introduction, I've discussed the volume dynamic control at length in previous videos, specifically in what is an expression map and how to create an expression map. For the full load down on volume dynamics, pop back and watch those. I promise I'll be here waiting for you to come back. The quick summary, however, is that in order to control the dynamics of your VST instrument, you can choose between using note velocity, how hard the notes are struck, or a MIDI control change. 
Many libraries use note velocity to control the dynamics of short articulation presets, such as staccato and pizzicato, and often MIDI control change one to control the dynamics of long articulation presets, such as legato and flatando. But let's take a look at this final set of controls for using a secondary dynamic. When you check the checkbox, you enable a duplicate set of volume dynamic controls to use in conjunction with the first. Let's look at an example. This VST instrument interface has two main sliders for controlling the playback of its presets. This one on the right is labeled dynamics. And of course, we know that an instrument such as this horn has a very different sound quality when played softly to when it's played more strongly. This slider is automated using MIDI control change one. And so in an expression map for this instrument technique, we would set the volume dynamic accordingly. The other slider is labeled expression. It's set to CC11, which is often expression, and it's for controlling the level of the instrument. We can benefit from this two-fold approach to controlling dynamics in our expression map by choosing to use a secondary dynamic of control change 11. Now, whenever this instrument has a lower dynamic marking in the music, both the expression and dynamic sliders will go down. When we pass a dynamic of a higher intensity, the sliders will both go up. Of course, we never actually want the expression slider to reach zero because then we wouldn't hear the instrument at all. Ideally, we would want to constrict it to perhaps just the top half of its full range. That's what the min and max controls are for. We do want the slider to be able to reach its max of 127, but we want the minimum value around halfway. So let's set that to 64. Now watch the two sliders as this example passes dynamics of varying intensity. So that's a quick trip down the column of technique controls in Dorico's expression map dialogue. I do hope you've enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, please leave me a like and consider subscribing to our channel to see many more videos like this one. Thank you so much. And that wraps up our look at expression map switches. And in the next video, we'll take a look at the next section of the dialogue where you can override specific playback options. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.